Hey everyone, it's David. Uh, it's another one of our holiday chat calls and uh, I'm joined by Christian who's on the line from Vancouver, British Columbia. Christian, how are you today? Hey, good. Yeah, beautiful British Columbia here. It's rainy, just like usual. <laughs> well, that's winter in BC. What, what did you just call it? A, a cold California? Correct. Yes. <laughs> What uh, what can I help you with today, Christian? Okay, sure. So I'm I'm uh, 30 years old, and and uh, about eight or nine years ago, I started my landscaping business. It was my first business endeavor, and um, and well, with no business background, I've I've had to figure out these past eight years how to run a business, and I've accumulated. Um, um, uh, about two hundred thousand dollars in debt, and so now I'm at a crossroads where um, I think Seth Godin, a famous author, he calls it the dip, and so <laughs> I'm I'm at I'm at this dip here where I don't know if it's worth investing more of my time in order to clean up the mess or if I should just jump this business vehicle into another one, and so I thought I'd call you okay. um, because uh, you're an expert. So um, we're going to have to get a little bit into the background here about about the business. Can you give me an idea of, of how big the business is? Like what kind of revenue would you do in a year normally? Yeah, so I started this business with a credit card and about $10,000. It's a landscaping maintenance business. And I went door to door um, with no knowledge of landscaping. This is how of a new person in, 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 in business, let alone in a career looks like. And, and so I said, I want a business. I want to, I want to learn a a new career. And so going door to door, learning landscaping. Um, I, 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 I have these maintenance services and, um, I've, I've learned to generate over the years about two to 300,000 in revenue. Um, a lot of that is expenses and so really um not managing the business right um there's there's been consecutive months where i'm in the negative and i'm not paying my past debts and so over the past eight years that's how basically i accumulated two hundred thousand in debt but now i'm at a point where i'm actually running the business very well and it's been profitable thousands of dollars in surplus every month um, but because of the coronavirus, mm. uh, you can bleep that out if you, if, if, if it hurts your podcast, because, um, I, I guess, uh, it's a sensitive topic, but because of that, economically speaking, um, it just kind of opened my eyes to, um, maybe if I apply my business knowledge in another industry, I would be able to see more progress, faster progress, traction to be able to scale up and, and I had a few ideas, um, but yeah, what do you, what do you think? Well, I, I still want to, I want to learn a little bit more about your landscaping business. So let's, sure. let's say for the past year, would your revenue have been about 300,000? Yes. Yes. And, um, and so basically the, the past year was the last year where I stopped messing around instead of having many employees, I started to to do the work myself instead of um, basically just focusing on services that had thin margins. I started niching down on my specialty, um, which is maintenance and, and um, kept the the profit healthier. Um, But the issue is um, me working in the field all day, um, takes me away from the sales and marketing and other things. And so basically um, every month I'm having a surplus because I'm the chief bottle washer, like all mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. Right. And um, it, 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 it doesn't fill me with, with joy because um, making a couple thousand dollars more um, every month is, is basically just trading time for money when you have $200,000 in debt. And so, um, I'm thinking I'm in an industry that the re- the it's too resource intensive and 
to basically give you um, an overview on, on the situation I'm in. I think I got in a, in a business that you need hundreds of thousands of dollars to get in. And I got it in with a, you know, with a $10,000 credit card. And so from day one, basically, um, it was going to lead to this. So, okay. So let's, let's get back to, to, to last year. Cause I, I want to, I want to have a better understanding of what's going on in your business. So you had about $300,000 of revenue. And then what would your expenses have been? I'm not talking about debt service or interest. I just want to know, you know, the money you paid out for the fuel, for repairs, for employees, like what, what was the expense out of that 300,000 to make the business go? Sure. So would you like to talk about last year when I had lots of employees or this year when I started basically just becoming a one man show? Well, you know, um, let's talk about how you're running it right now. So we'll sure, have a okay. here. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, remember every year for the past eight or nine years, I was at a loss and I was accumulating debt. But then last year I said, if I don't make enough margins for me to feel like this endeavor is worth it, if I don't make enough margins for me to, to sustain a certain lifestyle, I'm just not going to have any employees. And so basically um, now um, the current situation is um, I am, I am basically having uh, a surplus of about $5,000 every month on good months um, after my expenses, after everything. Uh, but so, I so, but hang, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, mm -hmm. Christian. So you are having, so on 300,000 of revenue, you're earning about 60,000 a year, but that, but are, does that include you taking a paycheck out of the business or not? Um, so, so, so this year, the numbers look more like 200,000 in revenue, um, business expenses are about 20,000 and then there's about 30,000 in materials. Um, and so 50,000 there. Um, and then my lifestyle is about another 30,000. So we got 80,000 mm -hmm. there. Um, and then yeah, I don't have my numbers in front of me, but basically in the end, in the end I'm 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 banking a couple thousand extra, but I should be paying past debt with that. I should uh be reinvesting in my company and it's just it's not a lot for mm -hmm. that much ha hassle for working night and day. So I've got 200,000 of revenue, 20,000 of expenses, 30,000 of materials, 30,000 for you which can't be much to live on in a city like Vancouver, that adds up to no. 80. So there's another 120. So you said you have about um, 5,000 a month of surplus. That's half of that. So where's the other 60? Yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. I should, I should have had my, my, um, my statements in front of me, but basically, um, yeah, there, there, those numbers are wrong. So, so basically at the end of every month, I have a few thousand dollars left over. I'm living very minimal, very frugal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm making, like you said, like around 150 a year currently in revenue. Um, and, and it's just very tight margins all throughout now. Um, in, in the former years, it was still tight margins, but I had more risk and more employees. And okay. so I, I, I think I'm I'm at a crossroads where can I even compete in this industry? Can I even scale it up? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I can tell you that your industry is highly competitive because if you're going to do landscape maintenance, you know, people with a pickup truck and some lawn mowers and, you know, some leaf blowers and stuff will sometimes get the idea to go out and start one of these businesses. And so you always have the threat of new entrants, right? Um, and a lot of those guys are going to be smaller. And then there's like a second category of landscape maintenance businesses. As you pointed out, the bigger companies that kind of get the big corporate contracts and they tend to have a little bit of better margins. Who, who are your yeah, customers? And what kind of people do you serve? The only reason why I've survived this long is because I focused on residential clients. They mm -hmm. pay right away. There's minimal risk there. 
um, I have not even attempted to move into the commercial sector that, you know, that, that pyramid of construction or, or whatever, just because of the simple fact that usually it's the net 30 and, uh, you know, I don't feel comfortable competing, you know, in, in that, in that realm because there, there are, you know, complicated contracts and all of that. And so really, you know, I'm, I'm from a ground level, I started this business on handshakes with sound minded residential clients. But the issue is, the the average ticket price is too small and mm -hmm. like you said there's so much competition and so i haven't been able to really grow my company because i don't have enough capital um and and if i were to get into the real money maker which is the commercial um i i just wouldn't be able to have that marketing budget and that and that cash flow um yeah okay so when uh, you're talking about the type of work that you do, you're talking about how you're focused now on maintenance. Before, were you doing like landscape construction, like installation of flower beds and lawns and that kind of thing? Yeah, and and I was doing that residential because um, the maintenance, um, it, it is recurring to an extent when you have the right client, but uh, usually the ticket price is small you know, 500 bucks, a thousand, maybe a couple thousand, three, 4,000. Mm -hmm. um, and so really you have to keep reselling that. And I said, well, I might as well sell a, a higher ticket price. That way I can focus on bigger jobs, bigger margins. But then the issue is now you're moving into a new type of work that's more complex, requires more skill, more equipment. And what I ended up doing is I ended up renting out expensive equipment. And so actually there's there's it was not not profitable at all and and so basically mm. i i was the entre the typical entrepreneur with no experience who said let's do a thousand ideas let's you know be mm. very very open-minded but um now here i i need to learn uh niche you know just fundamental um uh, business management and and that's what I've been doing this last year and it's been more profitable it's just yeah you know I have a, I have a other business ideas um and and I don't know if this this one is worth it anymore because I'm 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 basically applying my my knowledge and my skill to something that doesn't pay me enough well you know I, I've known a lot of people in the in the landscape business over the course of my career and generally what happens is people build up a good business doing maintenance and then they, they see the opportunity for big margins in the construction jobs. But then the risk is elevated because if you don't price it properly, you can end up losing money. And then you get into holdbacks sometimes if it's new construction or you, you get into, you know, having to hold receivables like you mentioned before with commercial. And it's usually the thing that becomes more complicated and causes these businesses to fail um let's yeah. talk about the david, debt david i'm a D david i'm a millennial just to touch quickly on that i'm mm -hmm. a millennial and i grew up with the first computers you know in the house and i i i now accept that you know that's a, a business opportunity that can go further than this old style business now there's nothing wrong with making good money in commercial in the commercial industry you know, if, if for some reason you, 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 you are, you're able to do that, but f just speaking for someone who started a business with no money, no experience from the ground up, um, I, I, and, and I'm a millennial, I'm leaning more towards other business ventures now where I'll, I'll be more appreciated and I'm, and, and I'll leave this traditional type of work to the people who are already established in the industry or, older people who that 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 fits their lifestyle more um but it doesn't make sense for me to move into the commercial industry there's there's too much many, much resources required um i'm not suggesting growth for you right now um okay. let, let's let's talk about let's talk about the debts so how sure. is your business organized are you a sole proprietor or are you a corporation yeah, so I I actually formed a corporation um 
just for the sake of doing it. Uh, Cause when I started my business, I really had no uh, money whatsoever to pay consultants and whatnot, which is the totally the wrong way to start a business. Um, but um, you know, I, I want, I wanted to be self-employed and, and I, and I was, I was looking for independence more than anything. And so I did it wrong and I got this corporation and um, and yeah, uh, the, it, the, the debt is a combination of, of personal debt from, from starting the business on credit cards. Mm-hmm. And then the other half is um, um, loans from suppliers and, and um, yeah, various suppliers because it's a complicated industry. Yeah. Okay. So, so of this 200,000 of debt, how much is in the business and how much is to you personally? Yeah, um, I would say in my personal name, it's it's about a hundred thousand, and then the other hundred thousand is is business. Oh yeah, back taxes too. Um, and taxes. Yeah. 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 And in the the business debt, is some of that debt for equipment and machinery or vehicles or yeah? What? Okay, so so is it because you got like dealer financing on mowers and things or? Yeah, basically a bunch of predatory loans. Um, yeah. Um, the, just the, the way, the way I started my business was so bootstrapped and not even po- economically possible. Cause, cause you know, I was, a, I was just a kid with no money and no business experience. No one's going to give me a healthy, you know, $50,000 loan. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up taking these, expensive like my most expensive loan was the truck um you know i'm yeah i'm paying towards owning it right um but mm-hmm. when you look at it on paper i paid i i, I have a loan a seventy thousand dollar loan on a truck that normally would cost you know 30 40 i would say forty thousand dollars in the store if you bought it in cash or or if you had good credit so, so what kind of lender is this from then? Is it from like a, like a, a finance company or? Um, well, the, what, what I did is um, I went to a dealership. I shopped around all these dealerships and one of them did some sort of magic and said, Hey, you're going to pay a lot of money for this uh, truck. But if you really, really want it, I'll make it happen. And um, it, that's the, <laughs> the interesting thing that, of business for some reason people are still willing to lend you money as long as they see you produce a profit and now i'm realizing that you know to run a a proper business isn't about the investment or it's not even about um the money is like i don't know money isn't an issue it's more about character and about business management and and the service Mm -hmm. and all that and how it all falls into place I've so learned, I've learned that in your podcast. So the on your personal side, this is mostly owed to credit cards. So this is what typically like twenty percent interest rates. Um, yeah, yeah, and it compounds every year, right? So yeah, yeah. And then within the corporation, um, you know, I know the taxes can get expensive, but it sounds like that truck loan is at a high rate, and then it is is the rest of the debt at a high rate as well. Um, um, I, I don't, I don't know. A large portion of that, 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 that is back taxes. So whatever mm-hmm. the Canadian government wants to charge me an in interest for paying. Late. Okay. All right. So, so if I could wave a magic wand and you could be doing anything you wanted, you already mentioned something on a, com- on to do with computers and stuff. What ideally would you spend your days doing? Oh man, I, I, I have so many ideas. Um, but basically I was now, now that I have some money saved up a small war chest here, um, uh, and, and it, we're coming up to winter, this is my time to really, um, get into another venture. And so what I was thinking of was, um, starting a marketing service company, um, given the fact that, um, I designed my own website and I understand what marketing is and all of that, I would just have to learn um, the service, um, which is like anything. You could pick it up real quick. Um, 
and and so but that's a service-based business i'm not i'm not too much of a fan of that maybe, maybe i would outsource the work to specialists in india and um you know be the entrepreneur in the middle um the other idea i had was i was going to um, start a youtube channel talk about um cultural events um talk about our civilization and such and um and then monetize that um with with my audience selling some sort of products online and and i think that would be a really good venture because um well i'm very knowledgeable in mm. in business and um i know there's a fanatic audience behind that that would convert um okay. into, into so buyers. My, my concern about that youtube channel idea is if you start that today the chances of developing a, a big enough subscriber base and to be able to monetize it to the point where you could live off of it, it would just take too long. I don't think you could reasonably yeah. do that to have an income, you know, in the next few months, the, the marketing service business, I personally know like a dozen people who, who got into that and then left that. Um, it's very competitive you you will be based in a very expensive city competing with i mean i just got one this morning on linkedin a woman from bogota colombia uh, promoting herself mm -hmm. doing that work for people here in canada and so you're competing in a in a global marketplace for people that can do that kind of work from anywhere right mm -hmm. and so yeah. let me let me ask you i want to ask you a couple of questions about the about the landscape business again because you've You've been in this for eight years, and it sounds like you've finally, number one, with $200,000 of revenue, I, I would categorize it not really as a business, but as a job, right? Yeah. Um, are you, I mean, in the past you had employees and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It seemed to me that if you had a, like a regular series of clients and you were just mowing their lawns, and that would be something pretty easy to get employees to do. What has your experience been with, with having employees do that kind of work? Yeah, I think, I think it just comes down to the fact that this is a very expensive city. It's very resource intensive to run this type of business. It's, it's hot. It's, it's heavily involved around local um, economics. And so basically um, I have to pay employees, Twenty dollars plus an hour. Mm -hmm. um, pay all these ridiculous um, um, provincial provincial um, um, services like um, you know health uh, what's that? WCB Workers Compensation Board, mm -hmm. uh, CPP Canadian Pension Plan, unemployment insurance, um, and. And so and another reason why I want to try to create a digital business is because I'm starting to realize um, uh, my my environment it does not support entrepreneurship. Um, it's quite sad actually. Um, and and but I did I did have another I do have other business ideas because I would love to stay what, here. And, what do you mean by your environment doesn't support entrepreneurship? The city itself, or just like your family and friends? Um. Well. I would say the city itself is just very expensive. You know, as, as a young person starting from the ground up, um, there's a cost of opportunity to get in the market. And I don't know, it's just, it's, you got to be willing to sacrifice a lot. And I've already sacrificed uh, a marriage uh, to try to chase all this. And, and I've, I've got the hang of it now, but now I need to make sure that the actual industry I'm in, the vehicle for my, lifestyle matches you know the everything and 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 the nice thing about digital businesses is that there is a possibility of one day hopefully li living in another country that um is more affordable and you could you know you could have your cake and eat it too but uh, i'm not too much of a fan of running away from responsibility either so yeah. i would love to to stay here and uh, and be successful here, obviously, like everybody. Tell me, uh, so you said you had a war chest saved up. How much cash do you have? Yeah, about ten thousand dollars. And and you know, listening to all your episodes, um, 
you know, I know there's struggling businesses out there and I could somehow position myself in the right business and take it over. And, and I was thinking maybe there's a failing restaurant out there, like literally, literally a hole in the wall and they have to um, get out of their lease, um, but they don't want to be liable. And so I basically just take it over and start paying them a couple thousand uh, above the lease and all that every month. And, and I just need to make sure I have uh, the, the right product, the right food to sell. Um, and so uh, it, w- it would be Mexican food. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this. If, if you had run this business of yours this past year, 2020, the way you've been running it, but you had no debts, what would that have mm-hmm. looked like for you? Oh, it would, it would look great. Um, I would be able to, um, you know, have everything I wanted basically. Um, and, and have, um, uh, just, uh, ha- have, have the peace and focus to keep reinvesting into my business. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, the issue is the debt, honestly, um, and that's just way that's just the way some sometimes things pan out because this is the I decided to be a businessman right eight years ago and mm-hmm. and eight years later here um, you know you you pay to learn and so um, well I've learned my lesson now and now I have to figure out what's the next thing um, because I I can stay in this um, but the question is how much longer is it going to take me to to, to be able to get rid of the debt and all of that. And that, that might be another 10 years. And so I, yeah, no, it's what, not gonna be 10 what's going to pay the price. So when you talk about all these different ideas you have, and you talk about things like taking over a, a failed restaurant, um, you, well, first of all, if you did that, you'd be going from a risky business industry into an even riskier one. Right. And you've already once in your life tried to start a business from scratch with $10,000. Right. (laughs) And so, and so, you know, that that's probably not a sound financial footing to start a business, right? Because of all the things that could happen. Um, If you stopped doing the landscape business today and decided to start a digital marketing agency, that 10 grand would be eaten up in overhead and living expenses, probably before you had five clients signed up. Could you agree? Yeah, I guess it all depends how. Um, I mean, I was I was thinking of, you know, giving a net 30 to all new clients and then imagining half of them wouldn't pay me. But somehow I just basically scale up the first month to, to be able to, you know, make five grand a month or something, which is what you need to live in this expensive, ridiculous city. But mm-hmm. yeah, basically, I, I was just going to basically do what I did before, which is start a business with no money, um, all the risk in the world, but try to outrun um, you know, bootstrap it, outrun your, your living expenses by living incredibly frugal. Yeah. Um, I, I know I have a marketing problem, David. And if, if I'm, if I'm able to crack this code here with this industry next year, I would be a millionaire. It's ridiculous. And, and I, so, it, it, yeah, I feel conflicted about this. I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think you have a marketing problem. I mean, you're, you're talking to me about a uh, one man business that with 200,000 of revenue with expenses and materials of about 25% of that. And, and I know this is not the business that you dreamed about with employees doing all the work where you could work on the business, et cetera. But if you had this business for 2021 and ran it the same way you did in 2020, but you didn't have the debt your life would be changed 180 degrees, wouldn't it? It would, because I would be able to um, have a family with that money, honestly. And I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's pretty good considering a lot of people in this city are struggling. Yeah. So, so then I would suggest that you have a debt problem. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so now that we've got our target aimed firmly at the debt, which is, you know, not a properly structured debt for someone who's in business, right? You've got 
all this high in, high interest credit card debt. You've got arrears to the government, and you know they charge penalties and everything on top of that. Um, the equipment that you own in the business, what do you think the equipment is worth? Like, if you were to sell it off used. Yeah, interesting. Interestingly enough, um, all the equipment I use is worth nothing. It's hundreds of dollars. The most expensive thing that I use is the truck. Mm-hmm. And once I once I get out of this this uh, these payments in the next two years, um, you know, may, maybe leasing is the way to go or some other type of thing because because. Um, um, I, I, I actually pride myself on having a business that the most expensive, uh, uh, part of that business is the labor and then everything else is like, you know, it's trivial. Right. And, and, and so I, I like that because in my eyes it's lean and mean. And in order for me to grow, I basically just need to find the right people and, mm. and and marketing, I th- I think the equipment is is shovels, hedge trimmers, you know. If you were trivial. to sell, if you were to try to sell that truck today, what would it sell for? No, I I don't think it would sell for anything because it's all banged up and and all that. I've had it for like three four years now. Okay, so how many kilometers are on it? Um, one hundred and sixty. So it's not that bad, but. Um, I yeah. would, I would, because I got a predatory loan, I would be basically in the negative still. Okay. So this but, business doesn't have any assets. Right. So, so realistically though, that truck, if, if you looked online for a similar kind of beat up old work truck, it, I mean, it might be worth two or $3,000 or something. Um, no, I would, I would say I could sell this truck for ten thousand dollars maybe if i if i if i really really tried but then there's probably an you know double that at least in in debt so so here's here's a potential solution for you then christian um you need to go and talk to a a licensed insolvency trustee and you have to talk with them about the different options between a proposal and personal bankruptcy and the cash you've saved up, um, you should probably try to turn that into actual cash to squirrel away in a box somewhere. And what you're going to do is you're going to talk to one of these, uh, they're called LITS, License Insolvency Trustees, and you're going to talk to them about the problem and they're probably going to make the corporation go away. Uh, fold it up, et cetera. Um, and then you have to go through some kind of insolvency process to get rid of all those credit card debts. But you need to transfer those assets from the business into your own name so that you okay. can run this so that you can run this business next year uh, just as a sole proprietorship. Um, and it's going, it no. may take a little bit of cash to do that. Like you might have to pay ultimately the trustee a few thousand dollars for the truck and the equipment. Okay. Um, now, now, if I go bankrupt, um, mm-hmm. does that affect me being able to legally run a sole proprietorship? No, it doesn't. If, if you, and, and, and so here's the strategy that I've sent, I've recommended to other people. What you do is you go to one licensed insolvency trustee and you talk to them about your problems and you get their feedback about how you solve this problem. But the licensed insolvency trustee works for your creditors. It's their job to get the maximum amount of money out of you that they can to give to the creditors. Okay. Okay. So you go to one to find out what can I do? What are my options, et cetera? which then may inform how you decide to, to create your own plan here. It, bankruptcy or doing a proposal, it's, a different, it's another kind of thing that they do. The, it's, like a, it's like a hand in a game of poker. Like, okay. you know, you, you have been paying through the nose on all these high interest things. Your creditors have made lots of money off of you. Um, oh, yeah this is a debt problem and you get rid of a debt problem by getting rid of debt. 
And so if you go bankrupt, you can't be a director of a corporation while you're in bankruptcy. Okay. But if you end up declaring a proposal that's accepted, you can still be a director of a corporation. But nothing on earth can, you know, nothing in Canadian law can stop you from uh, being a sole proprietor because the business is just you. And okay. certain of the tools in your business, if you were to transfer them to your own name, so used, you know, lawnmowers and garden equipment, et cetera, like you said, it's not worth very much. So if, you know, if you bought that from your corporation and those tools belong to you and the truck belong to you, then you would be protected from losing some of those things in a bankruptcy because they're the tools of your trade. Okay. And this is, this is why you need to talk to a, a licensed insolvency trustee because they're going to tell you exactly what, how this works. Okay. And then next year and you could you could run the business um, under your own name, and you wouldn't have any of that debt to pay. You'd have if you had too much income, you might have to pay something to the trustee. And again, this is what you're going to learn in your first visit. Mm -hmm. So I need to I need to focus on having enough surplus right now to to pay off this the the debt on this vehicle, transfer no. it to my name. No, 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 no. No, okay. you, you, you just want some cash and then you're going to go talk to the trustee because when, when you go bankrupt, what happens is you sign over everything and, and if it's your company that goes bankrupt or you that goes bankrupt, and again, these little details, this is what you talk to the trustee about because I'm not a pro at this. All the assets and all the debts get signed over to the trustee. They are now the owners of your debts and your assets. And so the trustee will say, to the, the leasing company or the, the company that owns the debt on the truck, he's going to call them up or he or she is going to call them up and say, oh, you are owed 30 grand or whatever on this truck that's worth 2000 Come and get it. Or Christian has told me that if you want to, he'll buy it off you for 1500 bucks. Well, okay. the cost they would incur in repossessing the vehicle, bringing it to the auction house, going through all that process is going to be prohibitive. So they may accept that kind of offer from you. But, you, you but were, you're is, saying that the in, insolvency agent works, works against you. Is there anybody that I could get to work in my favor, uh, even if I have to pay them a consultation? Well, you, you know, you can go talk to a lawyer or something, but it's typically not worth well, not worth the money. This is why I say go to one of them to learn what your options are. Then you formulate a plan and you go to a different one to execute okay. your plan in case there's something you told the first one that you don't want the second one to know. So, so instead of focusing on business deals, and now I got to focus on on this deal. That's that's interesting. Because uh, like that's, uh, that's you've been you've been running this business for eight years, you're an expert in lawn maintenance. If you're going to make yeah. any money in 2021 in a business, it's going to be this one. I know, and 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 the interest the interesting thing thing is in a in a year or two, I could make enough money to literally pay off all of that debt. I. I um, but it's, I guess I guess it, I, I I guess this is what I needed to to know how how to navigate this this problem and 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 it's and it's making a deal with them and and yeah I got to get mm -hmm. it done yeah. Now, if you think that over the next couple of years you could make enough money to pay off most of this debt, then bankruptcy may not be the route. It may be through what's called a a, a creditor proposal, where the trustee still is a part of this, but they go to your creditors and they say, look, if Christian goes bankrupt, you're going to end up with three grand, but he's proposing to settle all of his, you know, debts, his hundreds of thousands of dollars of debts uh, for, you know, 40 grand paid, you know, monthly over the next five years. And given the choice between those two, the creditors will often elect to go with the payment plan. In that scenario, you don't go bankrupt. You can still maintain the corporation as it is, but the debts get wiped away. Now, you have to talk to a trustee because I'm not I'm not exactly an expert on the particulars of what happens in the company versus outside the company. 
And maybe the trustee says, you know what, we just fold up the company anyway and you start a new one or what have you. And that's why you have to go to the first trustee to, to see what the different options and, and how it can play out. And then you make your decision about how you want to play these cards. Okay. Yeah. But, and, and, I, and, and, and if, if my, if, if, if my um, current skills make decent money and, and I know I can make more money in this, then it just makes sense for me to stay in landscaping and, mm-hmm. and just try to manage it correct. Right. And try to figure out a way to, um, you know, crack the margins and put some towards marketing and such. Yeah. I, I think that if you didn't have all of these debt payments to pay, then you would probably be able to start building this thing up the proper way after, after having learned all those lessons over the years. Right. So, so maybe you decide to target a certain neighborhood, you try to get some more clients in there, and then you build it up to the point where you have an employee that goes once a week, you know, to do the homes in that neighborhood. And maybe you're ever able to, to, you know, keep growing it inch by inch uh, and build it up in a solid way, you know, with, with cash in the bank all the time and not be using debt all the time. It, whether it's bankruptcy or a consumer proposal, your credit score is going to be, um, you know, impaired for a few years. So you're going to have to learn to live off of, you know, good solid cash positions. Another issue I had in my cash flow that has led me to this major debt problem um, has been that my industry is only about nine months out of the year, and mm-hmm. there's three months where I consecutively consecutively have no cash flow from the landscaping, and I tried to crack that by crack that problem by um, working for a, a company that that was doing snow removal. So I was their subcontractor. The issue mm-hmm. is that never worked out because um, since since we were interdependent, um, they were never um, um, responsible enough to, to maintain that relationship with me and make sure I, I, I was paid enough to cover my overhead and such. And so basically it, it became like 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 a real um i don't know it's it's kind of grimy how how you think you're getting into um a partnership with another bigger company and they're going to um you know the money's going to trickle down that that supply chain and pyramid but i'm sure you you know that in, in when you're a subcontractor sometimes um it's not worth it cause yeah for some I, reason you can't make money at that the, the seasonality issue is probably one of the easiest fixes on this call. So uh, the homeowners who you go and you do the lawn maintenance for, uh, I know Vancouver gets a lot of rain in the winter and some ice and freezing and a little bit of snow. Uh, you don't get snow like I do at this end of the country where sometimes we get four feet of snow, right? So what you start doing this spring when you go to talk to your customers is you offer them a, a year round service package with the lawn maintenance and then salting, sanding, snowblower service, et cetera, in the winter time, you bundle it all together and then offer them a monthly subscription plan. So every, every person you sign up, they're offered a 12 month contract that includes both the summer and the winter service. And now you just smoothed out your cash flow for the whole year. Okay. So I focus on marketing and sales and, just grow that volume and hey maybe maybe i end up subcontracting some of that out but at least i'm not yeah but that's that's good that's good yeah um just mm-hmm. keep keep selling and, and marketing because i can't be reliant on on on, on other people um, right others you know I, I can't be a subcontractor they don't run their business as well um uh, but i am i am a good salesman i'm the world's best salesman and so um, I could definitely do that, and, and, and I'm fully confident in my ability to create more income. So I, I think I'm just going to have to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to have to hunker down and, and um, live, the, live, live what I wanted to become, which was a business owner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Um, I don't know if anyone told you in the beginning, but business sometimes is hard. <laughs> yeah, eight and, years later. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure <laughs> it out. But, but you know, the it, it it seems like a huge you know anchor weighing on you right now. Solving this debt problem in a, in a, a way that can let you breathe and let you grow. What it's going to do is over the next few years, while your credit is, you know, is impaired, um, it's going to allow you to build a solid foundation. You're going to be able to have some profits. You're going to have to learn to live off of cash, et cetera. When your credit score recovers in, you know, five years or six years or something, well, then by that time, you will probably have an idea of what you want to be doing with this business. And by that time, you're going to have the business track record, the age and the credit score again to grow properly. So you'll be able to get a new truck and, and you know, get a loan at 5% interest instead of 39% interest. Mm-hmm. And you'll, you'll have the experience and the wisdom to make sure that you make the right bets on how you're going to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it really is about cash flow and, 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 and our capacities to create it. And, and well, I, I have created tons of cash flow, but just not enough. And so I, re- I really just do need to focus on running a good business, love it, love doing it. And, mm-hmm. you know, to, to all the, all the people out there, that are afraid of business, regardless of my debt, I'm, I'm the happiest guy in the world. I change people's lives every day. And, and, um, there's just no other way for me to live. And so I'm, I'm just so glad that you, you didn't tell me to become an employee because that, if you would have told me, Hey, I recommend you go bankrupt and go be an employee. That would have been the death of me. Um, I think I have to be a business owner. I have to be an entrepreneur leader type. Um, that's, that's just, uh, what my my values in life is all about, and so as long as I'm doing that, and I see progress in that, um, yeah, that's my slice of heaven. Well, you know, as as someone, I mean, in my own personal life, I've been back and forth between entrepreneurship and employment a couple of times, and every time I leave a job, and that's been like three times in my life, I've left jobs because I was getting into businesses. I remember I would always tell someone someone in my life, either a parent or a spouse at the time, Hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? I have to get another job. And <laughs> just for a bit of perspective for everyone. Um, yeah, Christian, the worst thing that can happen is that you do have to get a job, but it, it even though you're in position, even though you're in a bad spot right now, you're still not at that bad a spot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's like rock bottom. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that's what you need to do. You need to go, you have to go talk to a, a licensed insolvency trustee. Um, look around online because um, they, they all help people with personal issues, but uh, not all of them help with corporations and business issues. Um, the, their advice could involve, um, you know, just letting the company go, um, just letting it like kind of die. Like you stop doing the filings. Um, you're as a director of the company, you're personally liable for the revenue Canada things. So even in a Mm -hmm. personal insolvency, a lot of that stuff will get, will get caught up and taken care of. Um, but yeah, so you need to talk to a licensed insolvency trustee. You need to figure out, um, what the different cards are to play. And then you have to figure out what your game plan is going to be. And then you execute that plan. Um, And so between, you know, the cash that you have access to, even if you go bankrupt, if you have a few thousand dollars, they let you keep that because you need to have some cash. Um, And if you think you have too much cash, well, then maybe you want to have that in actual paper currency. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, You you totally answered my my questions. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I have a game plan now and, and that's, that was, that's what was killing me, you know, just trying to figure out 
how to solve that problem. But now that that I can a- aim at it, um, mm-hmm. it's just another thing on the list. And and uh, yeah, life continues, and uh, that's just awesome that I'll be able to to move on to the next uh, part of life now. Awesome, man. Well, I'm glad I was able to help you give some clarity. And uh, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. You're doing great work. Thank you so much. I'm going to listen to the next 300 episodes. All right, man. Have a good night. See ya. Bye.